Welcome back to Africa This Week. For a continent set to be growing and struggling at the same time, Africa is a complex mix where law and order is often on a collision course with acts of lawlessness. From criminal minds to armed gangs, mere suspects and serial offenders, the role of the police in society cannot be overemphasized. Just that the days when many referred to them as friends are fading fast. Now, joining me to dig deep on Africa this week is Alfred Kemekpadu, a policy analyst and a social commentator. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Well, what are your thoughts on the activities of the police and the growing call for reforms, especially in Nigeria? Um, the growing call for reform in the police sector is welcome. It's overdue. Uh, it's very timely. Uh, just that um, it is our appeal and it is our, it's, it's our desire that the calls are made more effective and it's not just uh, one of those political calls that we may have mm. witnessed in recent past. Especially um, the most uh, brazen sector of the police, um, popularly known as SARS, SARS. or the F-SARS, that has been renamed, you understand. So it's, it's a welcome one, we expect it. Okay, um, impunity and abuse of power by security operatives has become almost um, a culture, especially against um, journalists now, but we're not going to go into journalists. Um, what do you think is the reason why this trend has prevailed? I think it's because of the much of indiscipline that has perme permeated the system over time. Indiscipline in terms of... Um, the, the way they, I think the police, they are, they, they, they are supposed to be law enforcement agents, uh, but they've, they've carried themselves most of the time outside the law that they have to enforce. So over time, a bit of rascality uh, has, has permeated uh, mm -hmm. their operations. This is, not, uh, this is not peculiar to just the rank and file, even from the top from the Inspector General of Police to every other person. I say this with a whole lot of things. Recently, we have been complaining about the rascality of um, the Special Anti-Robbery Squad, which the Vice President, uh, Yemi Osibanjo, in acting capacity, has called for an overhaul. Uh, the rascality of men of the SARS uh, has become something unbearable. Yeah. I have been a victim of um, SARS brutality. Um, not too long, recently in Yenegoa by Elsa State, okay. men of the SARS units, federal SARS, uh, came into the states without notice to even the police structure in the state. I'm giving an example out of many. Came into the state, not even with notice to men of the state, uh, in the name of recovering a stolen vehicle and spoke shot sporadically into the air, mm. uh, like in their usual manner. Mm. And um, in the course of that, they killed, or should I say they murdered an assistant superintendent of police by name Apos Matthew from One Ufoni of them. Town. One of them. Okay. Uh, probably even before they realized he was um, an assistant superintendent of police. Mm. So we, we can hear about this and many other ones, you understand? And why I say the rascality permeates from not just in, among the rank of fire, but from the top is that um, cases have been made against the police and even the inspector general of police is aware of this. And till today, as we speak, even upon the fact that this mayhem was caused against one of them, nothing has been done even after the DPP's report. So you begin to think what else they do to ordinary citizens. I have personally seen in the cities of Portacot where men of this special anti-robbery squad mm. come out of their vehicles in black clothing, sometimes appearing even more like the armed robbers they are supposed themselves. to, with, with vehicles that are not branded. I have seen them jump out of Sienna's, not just with guns and AK-47s, but with machetes and other. You begin to wonder, it's so scary what they are trying to do. So The, the saying, um, the police is your friend, does that still stand? Well, it will still stand to a reasonable level extent because um, we can't totally write off the police. They, 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 there are a bit of positives we have seen from uh, fantastic police officers who are also doing their job. But the brigandage and the rascality um, in their operations is becoming unbearable. And let me just say this. Uh, today we are all talking about SARS. SARS, mm. uh, the operations of SARS is, 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 is a reflection of, of what the police is today and it, it has to be tamed. But you see, we must also quickly say that as much as we condemn the police a little bit to the 
left or to whichever areas we are condemning them. I think the police at this particular point in time also need support. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you go to our police barracks. You know, and like you, you scold the child with the right hand yes, and you draw him closer yes, with the left hand. The police also need support. You mm. go to the police barracks, you see how dilapidated their barracks are. You move past policemen on the road, you see how their uniforms are unkept. Uh, provisions are not made for them to uniforms go on Uniforms they have to pay for pay themselves. For themselves. With Boots their meager they have to pay salaries. For themselves. Yes. Um, their meager salaries. Mm. The average policeman in the streets of. Um, in the streets of this country, it's not insured. Um, he, he doesn't know what happens to him in case he goes down in the line of his duty. And and you know, even when you go to their police stations, they they they, are, they, they have to pay for their stationaries themselves, and a whole lot of this. I, so I completely agree that they need to be supported. But while we wait for that support, they also need to carry themselves in a manner that is dignifying, and not in this manner that has become so shameful. Okay, well, in a bit to overhaul SARS, uh, that's uh, following the presidential directive, yeah. what other ways do you think the government can look into effective policing in this country? When one besides just overhauling yeah, it? Besides it, just overhauling, you see, we have always, even on this program, we had come here and called for the restructuring of the Nigerian state. Mm. And when we talked about the restructuring of the Nigerian state, so many people had thought that we were talking about the dismemberment of the Nigerian structure or the disunity of Nigeria. Part of what they can do to make the police even more effective is to begin to create a platform for the conversation of a restructured Nigerian police. Mm. We need to think of how we can make the Nigerian police even more local. We need to understand um, we need to restructure the Nigerian police to fit into the peculiarities of every region, every region according to the religion, the tribe, the culture. And if you like, say, the geography of the environment, you understand? Because policing does not start with gunning and arrest. Policing starts with intelligence. Policing starts with cautionary. Policing involves more than all of what we can see about the police. Yeah, so, well, that is already being considered with the recent call for the decentralizing of, of the police. Don't you think so? Yeah, that is what that's we... Uh, an almost indirect way of creating state police, state if poli you ask well, me. So. Well, uh, yeah, if you say state police, fine, but we need to make policing more local. We need to make policing more community-based. And you see... How do you make it more local than creating state police? State, well, that is what I'm saying, that let it not be the usual political talk because of the politics and the elections that is around the corner. Okay. Like I had said here, we had always recorded. It, it's not only the police that is having a problem in this country. Mm. There, there are a whole lot of things that are having a problem, you understand? The federal government, as it has been stated somewhere, you, you see, when you say you have a federal system, you understand, one of the basic responsibilities of a federal system, you understand, it, it is being distracted by this centralization of authorities in, in the federal system. So the federal government now needs to begin to see how we can begin to decentralize all of these things to get more result and more, uh, more, a more, a more, a more down to, a more down to up form and not that up to down Not the pattern. pyramid pattern. Yeah, yeah, pattern of... Uh, well, this committee has already been formed to look into the decentralization of police. How do you think this will play out? In the scheme of things, considering the agitations for this state police that we're still talking about. Mm -hmm. How do you mean things will play out? How, like how, if it's going to be fruitful? Yeah, will it, we, we, will it we, we, guarantee the security of people in the state? Of course it will guarantee the security of people in the state because um, it, it, it's, it, it's, not, it's, it's not utopian. This is something that is applicable in other climates and in other countries, mm. you understand? Lagos State is already succeeding in, 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 in ways that have not been legitimately federally approved. So these are case studies that it can work everywhere and elsewhere. So we need to really go to bed, you see. The most important thing in this circumstance, it not, it's not for them to, as usual, rule out these talks yeah. during the elections. How effective can we implement these proposals? And how quickly can we implement these proposals? It you you seem to be of the opinion that this call is only coming because of next year's election. It, 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 it's very possible because when this administration, with due respect to the president and his administration, when mm. this administration was coming on board, they talked about restructuring. Mm. And the restructuring of the Nigerian state included this and 
many more. At a particular time, the president, who is the head of the government, was not dismissive of the restructuring. Then agenda. at a particular he was dismissive of the restructuring agenda. Then at a particular time when politics was closed, his party, led by the former party chairman Onyegu, fortunately I was also in that panel. I think I was the only non-governmental organization in that panel alongside Onyegu, Erofi, and the other people. They talked about the blueprint of the restructuring, how they're going to consider the restructuring. Then after that, they were dismissive of, again, dismissive of it again. They are in turbulent waters now, and you are now talking about it. So it's only legitimate, it's only fair for anybody, any Nigerian like me, to be suspicious of their moves. It's, any, it's only fair for any Nigerian, anybody like me, to say they are not sincere with their moves. But however, my suspicion and my pessimism around this whole thing is not as important as my optimism mm. to ensure that this time, let them stay true to what they are proposing because Nigeria needs to move forward. The truth is, Nigeria is not working with the present structure and the state of affairs. You mentioned the illegal invasion of your state by men of the SARS and then especially they were not wearing uniform. How do we stop this trend of policemen, policemen going about without being in proper identifiable uniform? It, it, it all comes down to discipline in the police. In the police, I agree that the police has units mm. that needs to go with for clandestine operations like their SIB and yeah. the CID and the rest. But you see, it, it, they need an entirely disciplined structure. And let me tell you this: what they need to instill discipline in the police force and the personnel they need to instill is around. Mm. They have it in Nigeria. You have the personnel. You have men with experience and expertise. It is just not enforced. And that is why now that the acting president has come to say, this is what we are going to do, we, it is our prayer that he leads the pack. Because if he leads the pack and the inspector general, uh, Idris, yeah. or any other inspector general that may come after now, leads the pack, hopefully we will see results. After all, when uh, the former inspector general, I think Mohamed Abubakar or something, when he was serious about the roadblocks going off the, the roads, roads. The roadblocks went off the roads. But they're back. They, they are back. <laughs> and, but you know, the most interesting thing is that what the roadblocks Unfortunately, were Unfortunately, we've, we've run out of time <laughs> and we cannot discuss any further. <laughs> Alfred Kemekwadu, policy analyst and social commentator. Thank you. I'd like to thank you for joining Thanks me for on me. Africa This Week. Thank you. Well, one of the main issues that have held Africa back as a continent includes the abuse of power, human rights violations, and the desecration of public institutions. Unfortunately, the police have been found culpable in recent times, and no doubt, effective reform would do the police a lot of good. But part of the responsibility also lies on individuals becoming the kind of nation they want to see, bearing in mind that every institution is a reflection of society. That's our program today and I have been your guide, Fadisha Lashutingwa. Many thanks for watching and bye for now.